Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for your love and grace today. God, I pray that this morning you would forgive us for where we fail you, Lord, because we know that we often do. And Lord, we can't do enough to um, give back for all that you've done for us, Lord, but we're just thankful that you've given us your Son and the Holy Spirit to guide us each day and to give us a hope everlasting, Lord. And we pray that today, God, that you would clear our minds that you would clear our hearts of the things that distract us, Lord, and help us to put our focus solely on you today. Lord, may we lift your name and glorify you today. God, there are several we've listed this morning, Lord, in prayer. And we, God, we want to mention our shut-ins, Lord. You know each one in our church that um, can't get out at this time, Lord. You know um, their health concerns and um, their specific needs, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would um, minister to them where they are and let them know that we're lifting them up in prayer this morning and, and uh, we truly miss them God and Lord we um, pray for um, Earlene Burris God we pray that you would minister to her and uh, you know her specific need you know that the battle she's facing ahead is one that um, is tough God and we know that you have the power and the strength to help her get through this and we pray God that she will depend on you and that she will call upon your name during this time. And God, we pray for the Murray family and the loss that they're grieving at this time and that you would give them comfort. And we pray for Kim who is going through uh, breast cancer treatments at this time. And um, we pray, God, that you would help her through this and uh, help her to trust in you, Lord. I pray that she has a knowledge of you and that she has a relationship with you. And we pray for Tony Ledbetter and his family and their business. And um, <clears throat> they've been struggling with COVID-19 and um, that sickness. And we know that it's been um, tough on a lot of families in our area. And we pray, God, that you would minister to each one. That you would uh, work in our nation as well, God. We know that our nation is struggling with all kinds of situations, not just the sickness uh, physically, but, God, the... Um, the spiritual sickness that's going on in our nation. God, we pray for healing, and we pray, God, for your guidance, Lord. And we pray for Tom, Lord. We pray, God, that you would minister to Carolyn's brother, Lord, as he's in the nursing home, and uh, we hope that it's possible for him to be able to have a visit soon. Uh, and we pray for those that are in the nursing homes during this time that you would um, just give them a hope that surpasses all understanding, and some of them don't even understand some of them have dementia and they don't understand what's going on. We pray, God, that you would give them peace. We pray for our nation again in, the Isra in Israel as well, God. We know that um, there's turmoil constant about. You've, um, you've prophesied and told us about this in your word. And we pray, God, that you would um, just continue to help us to read your word and trust in it. And, and know that uh, you're coming soon and help us to keep our eyes open for you. God, as we look at this um, Sunday school lesson this morning and we begin a new unit, I pray, God, that you would um, help us to see something afresh about the Ten Commandments and um, help us to apply them to our daily lives, Lord, so that we can share them with others and help others to see it that it's not just a list of don'ts, but it's something we desire to do because we love you and out of the goodness of what you have done for us, God. We pray, God, that you would work work through this lesson today and that you would be with the pastor as he brings the message at the coming time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, this morning we're going to start a new lesson. It's called After God's Own Heart. Um, a fresh look at the Ten Commandments. Uh, this unit uh, we're looking at was written by uh, Tony Evans. I don't know if many of y'all know him or not. Um, I really like to listen to him preach. Um, his daughter's Priscilla Schreier. She does a lot of uh, women of faith lessons and stuff, but um, they really have a, a unique way of bringing the message. But uh, he begins talking about how, I think it's obvious, we know our nation's in uh, dire straits right now, um, and ethics and morals continue to climb. Um, my mom saw a difference as I was growing up, and I see a difference as my kids have grown up, and my kids are seeing a difference as their children continue to grow up. Um, and so um, this is not what God intended for his world and for his people. Um, we see that uh, people today, they want to live the way they want to live, don't they? 
No one incorporate God when it's convenient for, for him to be a part of their lives. Um, even even Christians do that. What? <coughs> yeah, we do that. Uh, but God has provided us with clear, concise um, way for us to live by the Ten Commandments. Um, he knows that we can't keep all the Ten Commandments, and that's why he gave us Jesus. But um, he, he gave us some uh, guidelines to go by. Uh, and we know that Jesus narrowed those commandments down to, to two things, loving God and loving others. Um, this unit... Uh, that we're going to look at is, is prim primarily to help us to look at um, how when we have a right relationship with God that we can have right relationships with others. Um, and so uh, session one is um, the first, we're going to focus on placing God first in our lives. Um, and the point uh, is God is to have first place in every aspect of our life. Um, passages that we're going to look at is Exodus 20, 1 through 6, Psalm 16, 1 through 4, A, and then 9 through 11. Um, Scott and I were talking about the Bible meets life just a minute ago, and uh, I, lo I love the stories that they use to kind of get you um, ignited into the lesson, but it was uh, kind of neat. The, the guy went to the doctor because he was hurting all over. And I was sitting there thinking, I know where this is going. The doctor's going to say he's a hypochondriac. <laughs> That's not what happened. <laughs> the doctor said, well, what did you show me? You know, he was sitting there pointing. He said, oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Come find out he had a dislocated finger. It was just down to one thing. One thing was wrong with him. So, uh but that's how it is in our life. Sometimes we, we need to realize that the only thing that's really wrong with us is our relationship with the Lord. Uh, if we get that right, then everything else will flow. I think you've noticed, uh, I, I have personally, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but if I start my day out in the mornings without the Lord, it seems like that's when everything goes wrong. One thing right after the other. It's like Satan pounces right on your back and says, Ha, 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 I got you now. Um, so I can see a difference. So if you wake up, as soon as you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, Lord, today is yours. I need your protection. And you start off with his word. It's a whole different perspective when things, what we perceive as going wrong, go wrong. We kind of like, well, let's see what God has to say about this. We can handle this. You know, God's got this. Um, but... So um, if we just put that one action in, into, into place every single day, everything else will flow. It's that easy, right? We make it hard, don't we? All right. <clears throat> but most of us, we would say we put God first, wouldn't we? We would say we put God first, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but sometimes... Things kind of seep in the cracks, don't they? You're like, okay, wait a minute, God, I'll get to you in just a minute. Let me take care of this child. Let me get this child fed and out the door for school. Or let me let me get ready for work, and then I'll stop and have a few minutes with you. I got I got so much to do today. But and then sometimes you're like, oh, what happened on the news today? Oh my goodness. Or or I don't have Facebook, but some people do, and they get on. Did you see what Bobby Sue posted on Facebook? Oh, my heavens. I got to call her. God, I'll get with you in just a minute. But we let things get in the way, don't we? So do we really put God first? Sometimes, sometimes we do, but sometimes we let things get in the way. So we have to think about those things. But when, uh, when we let things steal our time from God, the Bible kind of calls that kind of, let me rephrase that, the Bible calls that idolatry. And when I was studying this, uh, my heart was correctly convicted because there's a lot of things that I do allow steal my time. <clears throat> I'm guilty of that. And, um, and I ask God to forgive me because it's not my intention, it's not my desire, but it happens. It's easy for us to deceive ourselves because we don't physically bow down to statues. Um, like they did in the Old Testament. It's easy for us to say, but I love God. I love him with all my heart. But it's easy for us to say that because we're not physically paying homage to some grandiose statue or something. 
but spiritually we can be idolaters and not even realize them. Let's read Exodus 20, 1 through 6. It says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under, under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So, recognize in the first, uh, first uh, verse, we see that before God gave the Ten Commandments, he reminded his people of who he is. Um, he said, I'm the Lord thy God. Um, and he reminded them of what he did for them. Um, he brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery. Um, and he reminded that he... Um, he reminded them he provided uh, redemption and freedom for them. Um, you have to think, the Israelites had spent all those generations in Egypt, where Egypt had all these different gods for everything. They had a god for everything. So it was something for them to think, okay, well, this is just one more god. I can do that. I can follow this one more god. But he wanted them to understand that he was the one and only god that those other gods couldn't do what he did. And so he told them not to create any graven images, not to, not to create something else to worship, that he alone deserved this worship, and he alone was the only one that could do what he did. And so that's why he wrote the Ten Commandments and was telling them not to do a graven image, not to worship anything but him. And he wanted to remind them of what he had done. <clears throat> their gratitude to him for what he had done should have been enough to put him first in their lives. Um, I remember the first time I had ever read the, the story of their exodus, I thought, after seeing the Red Sea split, there's no way, that, no other way I'd ever worship anything else. But how quickly do we forget we are just like the Israelites. We forget what God has done for us. We forget where God has brought us from. We forget about the, the former life he has changed and taken from us. Because we, we get, uh, we're spoiled. We get, we, we get caught up in our, um, our life and the things that we see that we think are wrong in our life. And we kind of have like those moments. You ever have a self-pity party? I'm sure y'all don't. Uh, but, you know, we get caught up like, woe is me, you know, everything's going wrong, I don't have this, I don't have that. But if you stop and think, you have everything that you need. You have everything that you need. And he's done all that you need. You know, he's giving you air, he's giving, you know, he provides everything. But, so my first thought was like, you know, why would they ever turn their back on God? What happened when they got, they weren't even far from Egypt, and they were ready to turn back and go back into slavery. And they prayed for years for God to help them get out of slavery. And I'm thinking, they're crazy. But we do that. We tend to do that. Um, so, um, but if he forced us to worship and obey him, that would not be true devotion and honor, would it? If he forced us. You think about um, you think about when you're forced to do something, like when your parents tell you to do something, and you're, you're when you were little and you were like, "Well, why? Because I told you so." And you're thinking, "But I don't want to. <laughs> I told you to." <laughs> Talking back was the worst thing to do as a kid. But if you're forced to do something, you don't really. But he wanted us to do it out of genuine love because of what he had done. That's why he gives us a choice. 
Um, God knows if we give him our hearts willingly, out of willingly, then out of love we'll obey. So these Ten Commandments might be to some people a list of don'ts. Don't do this and don't do that. But if you think about it, these things are goals that we would normally try to do because of the love that we have for him. Um, it's like our parents. We love them, so we want to obey them, even though they say, don't do that. <laughs> we do it because we love them. We don't want to disappoint them. Um, and that's what his desire was for us, is that, and that's why he gave us that choice. Um, in looking at Psalm 16, 1 through 4, we're going to see in these next verses that God is to be first because he alone is good and completely trustworthy. <clears throat> it says, um, God, uh, David says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. So David begins with asking God to preserve him or protect him because he puts his trust in God alone. Um, most of us, when we pray in the morning, we ask God to protect us, don't we? Um, we'll ask him to give us travel mercies. If we go to work that morning, we'll ask him to give us travel mercies to work. We ask him to protect our hearts and our mind and, um, and guide us. Um, I pray for discernment because sometimes I don't know how to handle certain phone calls I get at work. and I, I want to make the best decision. I don't want to get caught up in just saying, no, I'm sorry, we can't help you, because there are some people that genuinely need help. So I ask for his help. And so we have, when we come to him, we ask for that because we trust that he's going to provide that for us, don't we? Um, I had someone ask me, well, how do you know that God is going to do this, do anything for you that you ask? I'm like, well, when you get an elevator, how do you know the elevator is going to take you to the floor you choose? <laughs> I mean, you just press the button and you get in. You just trust it's going to do what it's going to do. And I trust God to do what he's going to do. Um, God deserves uh, priority in our lives because he alone is good and trustworthy. And David um, shares that. Um, in his word, he says, Oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the, to the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Um, David did not go to God only when he needed something. We can see that throughout his life. Um, even as a boy, he went from, from a shepherd um, to king. Um, he trusted the Lord. Um, most people don't rise from being a shepherd boy to being on the throne on their own strength. Um, but you can read through um, the Psalms and see how he depended on the Lord. And we know that he was known as a man after God's own heart um, because uh, God, God called, said that about him. Um, he had, uh, David had an ever-growing relationship with him, and, and he trusted the Lord, and he relied upon him. David recognized that every good thing came from God. Um, David acknowledged the saints, or godly people, as we just read, in whom um, is, is all his delight. Here he is referring to God's chosen people, the Israelites, um, and, and in verse 4, David goes on to acknowledge those who are not faithful to God, but worship other gods. Woe to them. A reference um, most likely to the countries that, um, the pagan countries that worship false gods, or to the people of Israel who have turned away from God, is what the uh, commentary described. Um, these people would not receive the blessings from being developed, uh, excuse me, devoted to God. 
they uh, would experience great sorrows um, that would be multiplied. And I think about people today um, that have um, turned away from the Lord. You know, uh, in, in the New Testament, um, when they talk about the different seeds that fall into the soil and how some of them, they go into the soil and it's, uh, it, it's, it goes for a little while, but then when a good wind comes and blows it away, it's temporary and they turn from the Lord. Um, those are the people that I worry about. I worry about those people. Um, and I worry about the people that, that don't even take seed, that won't even hear you talk to them about the Lord because um, it's getting close. The time is coming. Um, but they would experience great sorrows. Um, David was telling us that God alone is good. And we know that. God alone is good. Um, if something isn't good, it doesn't mean it isn't of God. Um, it's kind of like when your child disobeys, do you not discipline them? Would that be good for their life if you didn't discipline your child when they did something wrong? Like if they stole a pack of gum from the, from the general store and you knew it and you didn't do anything about it, is that good for their life? No. And so when... when things happen in our life that we may perceive as not good doesn't mean that it's not good. I remember one time we had a discussion at work and uh, we were talking about prayer requests and I was thinking, you know, prayer requests are actually praise reports and I remember everybody looking at me like I was crazy and I said, but if you think about it, um, you see God's hand in every situation and you see how he used those prayer requests, those needs that we have to bring glory to his name and they change us. It's like when we get through those difficult times in our lives, we're different. We're different people. Um, and the individuals that are suffering in those those times of, of need, they're, they're different when they come on the other side of that situation. Um, so what we perceive as not, uh, as not a good thing is not that it's not a good thing. Um, they gave examples um, in the teacher's book of like Job and how he was tested and tried and I mean that poor man lost everything but he remained faithful and God gave him back more than what he even lost in the end. Um, so God uses those times in our lives to bring more good into our lives if we trust him and stay devoted to him no matter what. Isaiah 48.10, it says, I have refined you, but not as silver as is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the, in the furnace of suffering. Um, so suffering might be difficult for some of us, and it is. I groan like a little baby sometimes when things happen in my life. I, I, I know God's like, she is again. She's just like a little crybaby. But um, it's always for my good, and I know it. Um, and we know the famous scripture of Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that for those who have love, who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Um, so if we love him and we're going through this this time, time in our lives, we can know that he's going to bring good out of it, no matter what it is. Even if it's like something disappointing, if we knew, like, um, I have a friend of mine whose son has cerebral palsy, and he was supposed to have special surgery, but the insurance wouldn't approve it, and um, she was disappointed because he was supposed to have it uh, on the 4th. And she had asked everybody just to continue to pray, but um, the insurance said that they would prove it um, by January. And I told her, I said, you know, um, God's timing is always perfect. So if it, for some reason, God didn't want it to happen right now. And we just have to trust that. Um, scripture assures us that all things will be used for good when, when we love God and we put him first. And looking at the um, next verses, uh, Psalm 16, 9 through 11, we're going to see that um, that God is to be first because he alone offers eternal life. Um, 
Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to seek corruption. Thou wilt shew me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. David was stressing that God is to be first, and he alone deserved our worship because he was the only one who could provide us what was most valuable, eternal life. Um, because uh, God was the priority of David's life, he didn't fear anything that came, um, came to him in, in his present life or even after death. And we know that he was... He went from being a shepherd boy to a warrior and then to king. And um, he had to even flee from his own family for his own life. So, you know, he faced many obstacles. Um, and he trusted God through it all. Um, so he had he did not fear it, uh, anything. I know that he, he probably cried out to God. You know, in Psalms there was a lot of times he cried out to God that he knew God was going to comfort him and protect him. And I think that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to cry out to him. Even though he knows our hearts and he already knows what we're thinking and feeling, he wants us to call out. He wants us to verbally speak our need for him. Just as any, um, any parent wants their child to do, they want to be needed. Um, so uh, I think that, that God desires that from us. Um, in verse 10, David speaks of... Um, the Holy One. He's referring to the coming Messiah. Um, even in, in the Psalms, um, I find that amazing that, that, that God gave David that, that piece of valuable information. And I don't think it was by surprise. I think he wanted to comfort um, David. He wanted David to know that there was hope. Um, that there was an afterlife, that, that this life, when it ended, that it wasn't over, that he would see, you know, he would see him again. Um, in Acts uh, 2, 25 through 30, um, Peter um, called David a prophet, and he quoted Psalm 16, 8 through 11, as he emphasized the fulfillment of the prophecy in Jesus' resurrection. And then we also uh, know that Paul quoted Psalm 16, 10 in Acts 30, 1335, but God did not abandon Jesus in the grave, and we know that. We know that he did not leave Jesus there, that he, he rose, nor did God allow him to see corruption, so Jesus' body didn't decay um, like um, a normal process of a body, a mortal body would. And I find this amazing that even though David died and was buried in he had the confidence in knowing that nothing would separate him from God. And we can have that confidence today, too. David continued praising God, who had revealed to him the path of life and fullness of true joy. A lot of times it's hard for us to see the joy, especially today. We understand that um, there's fearful, um, uh, true fearfulness about um, COVID and how it affects everybody differently. Um, I have a close friend of mine that um, I work with, but she hasn't been at work because um, the doctors for the past, probably since before March, have been trying to confirm that she has an autoimmune disease, and her husband's a pastor, and so she's been staying at home, and um, he, when their church opened back up, he's been going and preaching, and he contracted COVID. And so now their whole family has it. And I don't know how this will affect her, but um, he, he's been placed on oxygen and, um, and everything. But uh, I'm like, it's, I mean, it could cause complete devastation. Um, and I don't know how it would affect her with them trying to confirm her diagnosis with some sort of autoimmune disease. But, you know, it affects everybody differently. And so, I, you know, I don't really know what to think about it. I don't know how to perceive it, but I know that this, these are uncertain times for some people, but um, we see that David continued praising God, and I think that that's what the scriptures just want us to, to, to do. They want us to keep our focus on him, 
if we keep our focus on Him and have a right relationship with Him, if we keep this right, then this will be right with everybody else. Um, in Deuteronomy uh, 30, 15, Moses had given the Israelites two options. Um, he said, um, uh, life, and, um, life and goodness or death and evil. He said life would come from loving God and obeying his commandments and being faithful to him, while turning away from God would lead to death and destruction. So um, I want to challenge y'all today in our Live It Out. Um, it talks about a couple of things, but I'm going to just kind of summarize it. It says, first I want you to recognize the idols in your life. Um, each day think about the things that steal a majority of your time. Um, whether it's um, social media, whether it's um, watching TV or reading books other than the Bible or um, talking on the phone or something like that. Just think about the things that steal your time, a majority of your time, and try to take and devote more of that time to the Lord. Um, run away from distractions. Um, it's funny to me how uh, just the moment you decide, I'm going to sit down and read a couple of chapters in the Bible, that's when something happens. Doorbell rings, or somebody calls and they need you to come help them with something. Or um, for me, it's like someone will show up at the door and they're like, hey, can you, I need to talk to you about something. But then that might be a divine appointment, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> uh, but And then I want to challenge you to be sure to begin each day with God. Um, and I'll try to do it as soon as your feet hit the floor. I mean, it. I mean, because God, it, uh, God is there and waiting, and I know that um, things get in the way. Uh, I know our first. I don't know about you, but it's always easy to go get a cup of coffee and turn the news on. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. The news is bad. <laughs> but um, I'm going to close now with prayer. Um, and I just thank y'all for this opportunity. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for uh, your love. And I thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for uh, your word and how you continue to reveal new truths to us. And it can be something we've read a thousand times. And again, you'll just point out something different. And God, I just thank you for that. I thank you for refreshing our minds, um, placing you first, and to... Um, Help us to keep our focus on you and not the things that can distract us from you and the things that can um, try to steal our joy and our hope. Um, and help us to be that light um, to those around us. And um, when someone is feeling um, kind of down, help us to be able to, to share what makes us joyful um, to them. God, I pray that as we uh, go forward in uh, the message today, God, I pray that you would prepare our hearts for a time of worship and uh, apply the message to our lives so that we can uh, share it with others. And I pray this in Jesus' name.